to the heart uh, because some people might argue that the heart chakra is the most important one of all, although they're all important. Uh, but this, some people say, if you can just get your heart chakra right first, everything else will fall into place. And that kind of resonates with me. So the heart chakra, of course, is located at the center of your chest. And this is your center of love, emotional energy, um, compassion, relationships, all of that good stuff. And the gland it's associated with is the thymus gland right here. I like to thump mine to get my immune system going. Um, and the color ray is green, but also pink. There's a lot of pink gemstones that work very nicely for the heart chakra. So if you are having um, a blockage or an imbalance at the heart, it could be that it expresses like you have a difficulty accessing your feelings or that you're emotionally numb or shut, uh, shut down. Um, it also could look like a difficulty giving and receiving love, uh, a feeling of loneliness um, or unhealthy relationships. Um, if it's overly active, sometimes you can be overly emotional, right? Like maybe coming from your emotional state at the expense of your logic and reason. Um, yeah, so those are some signs. Um, on a physical body level, if you're having any kind of heart conditions or respiratory lung conditions, um, any pain or uh, injury in the shoulders or the, uh, the, the upper back, or even like breast issues, breast cancer, that sort of thing. Uh, so the first stone, I want to talk about another really unusual one with you guys, because I think you'll really like it. Um, let me find it. Where'd it go? Ah. Okay, here's one that's called Tug to Pipe. <laughs> it's a funny name. It's a rare stone. How do you spell it that? From, uh, T U G T U P T I T E. Tug to pipe. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to spell it. I hope I, <laughs> I know. That right. Well, but people <laughs> are going to want to look these up. And I, yeah, and no, if, you I, if I have a question it about it, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Tug to pipe. Here's a big chunk of tug to pipe. Here's a smaller piece of tug to pipe. This one has more of the white and the light pink in it. Um, this is a stone that comes from Greenland. And Greenland uh, produces some of the most ancient stones that we have on the planet. Um, like another one that I like that comes from there is Numite. So some of these really ancient stones come from Greenland. Now, uh, tug to pipe has an interesting and rare feature called tenebrescence. And so what that means is this, if you take uh, your piece of tug to pipe and if you were to rub it for a long time in your hands or if you were to put it in the sun or expose it to some kind of heat, the color would change. The pink would turn into a dark crimson red. And if, you had, if I had some ultraviolet light, if I put an ultraviolet light on here, it would fluoresce into this like vibrant red color. So it's really cool. It has this whole color change thing going on with it. Anytime you have a stone that color changes, it can usually help you with shifting, shifting things in your life or shifting your consciousness to a higher vibratory level. Uh, so tug to pipe is the one I would recommend if you have shut your heart down due to painful emotional situations in the past, or if you're just feeling really blocked and emotionally numb, not able to access your feelings. Because this guy, he put it on the heart chakra, it blasts your heart chakra wide open uh, for full activation. And it just kind of like opens the floodgate. So all of that emotional energy can come to the surface. And it can oftentimes cause like an energy surge from the heart chakra that goes all the way up into the crown chakra. And when that happens, sometimes people uh, start having a oneness experience they start having these visual experiences. They get into these states of ecstasy and bliss. So it's almost like it, it feels kind of like um, a kundalini type of an experience that this stone can initiate. And for that reason, this stone has been called the mineral ayahuasca because it can induce these visionary states and these really high passionate type of emotional states. So it's a really fun one to work with. Um, and it's very beneficial too, because it's going to help you to clear and release all of that backlog of emotion that you hadn't allowed yourself to feel. So if any of you out there feel like you need help with heart opening, um, or you just want to play with a mineral ayahuasca, you might want to try out. 
Now, another one that I think is lovely, um, where did you go? Oh, is rhodochrosite. Um, I think this one is gonna be beneficial for all of us. So here is a lovely piece of rhodochrosite. This one kind of looks like a female goddess figure to me. And then here's my little scully that I got in Sedona one time. Look at the beautiful patterns on this thing. So rhodochrosite, it kind of looks like a valentine to me. It's got these beautiful pink and rosy shades in it and these bands and these swirls and these patterns. Does that one and have a name? No. <laughs> I'm sure it does, but I don't know what it is yet. But I've got okay. some more schools I'll show you that I do have their names. Okay. I promise. <laughs> uh, maybe somebody in the audience can tell me what the name is. Um, so anyway, this the first mission of rhodochrosite is a really important one. And that one is that it helps you to fully love yourself. It helps with unconditional love for the self. It has such a sweet and nurturing energy that when you're in the presence of the stone, it can feel like you're just being hugged by the angels and you're just getting this infusion of divine love that reminds you who you are and how precious you are and how worthy you are of love. So it's a, it, it, it really does so much to help us to love ourselves. But then the second thing this stone does is it helps to it helps us with the emotional healing. And here's how it does that. When you work with this stone, it can actually bring to the surface any old emotional hurts, traumas, repressed feelings, anything that you may have stuffed away because it was too difficult to face at the time that something difficult was happening. Um, it brings it up to the surface so that you can face it and heal it. And the other thing this stone does is it helps you to see it from a higher perspective and to understand that there was a reason why that happened. And it helps you to tap into the higher spiritual lessons and reasons. And when you can see it from that perspective, it's much easier to bring in a forgiveness vibration so that you can forgive anyone who may have hurt you and you can forgive yourself for putting yourself in that situation. Um, in addition to just bringing this stuff up, it also has a clearing energy. So it'll help to clear out the emotions and the patterns this one also can mend a broken heart. You know, sometimes I work with people and it literally feels like there's some damage around the chakra from these difficult emotional blow, blows that they might've taken. This stone has a way of putting all the pieces back together and bringing your heart chakra into greater wholeness. It also taps you into the wisdom that you gain from these experiences so that you don't have to repeat them. Uh, rhodochrosite is also going to empower the expression of your emotions. And this is um, something that is very useful for many of us because sometimes maybe we're scared to express our emotions because we don't know how the other person's going to receive that. So this helps you to feel safe uh, to express yourself, which is beautiful. Um, it also resonates with the inner child. Uh, so it can help with um, any inner child wounding and it can get you in touch with the healed inner child that is just full of life and wonder and love. So it's just a beautiful heart stone. So any questions about the heart? Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, you're not getting off that easily. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, well, all three of these that you, you named the, well, the two, I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Tug, tup tight. Yeah. <laughs> I'll learn how to pronounce that eventually. Yeah, that one's tricky. Yeah. And the rhodochrosite. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like they're both perfect for purging. A lot of people are going through purging right now. And I imagine it's probably going to bring up emotions. Right. Um, so is this somehow associated with water somehow, some way because of the emotions? Oh, you know, yeah. Absolutely. I think both of those stones have their functioning is kind of like a water element because it's right. cleansing and purging. Maybe I should talk about one other. Now that I'm thinking about it, this off the top of my head, because you're sure. right, those two are more about purging. Maybe I should share about one that's more about stabilizing. <laughs> because okay. maybe some people are kind of stuck. Maybe they're already having too much emotion coming out and it's, it's a little bit much. If you need to stabilize, let me look at my tray here. Ugh. How about this one? How about um, rhodonite? It's kind of similar to rhodochrosite, uh, but it's got that black manganese in it. See the big black splotches in there? We like it that it has manganese because manganese has a grounding and balancing effect on the physical and emotional bodies. 
So this is the one to turn to if you're just emotionally freaking out. Maybe you're expense, experiencing really intense, erratic, out of control emotions. Maybe you're in the middle of an anxiety attack. Maybe you've got excessive anger. Maybe you're so depressed that it's you know dangerous. If you're going through any kind of very heavy, intense emotion and you just need to kind of come back to center, uh, rhodonite might be the one for you because it's going to bring you back into your centered space. It's going to help you to make sense of your emotions and put them in the proper perspective and to build a more stable emotional foundation. So I'll, that's a bonus one for you. I wasn't planning awesome. on talking about it, but might as well. <laughs> Thank you. Erin Aaron has a question. She said that her heart chakra burns when I transmute. Is there a crystal that you would recommend to assist with that? Uh, the first one that just popped into my mind was aquamarine. And that's funny because that's probably one of the next ones I'm going to talk about. Um, aquamarine um, is going to help with it when you're transmuting. It's going to help you with that process, but it's going to bring this really calming, cooling, watery quality that just might not, it might temper some of that heat that comes along with it, if that makes sense. It might make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, and it'll also help with um, transmuting. Mm -hmm. um, I, for some reason, the sound is off. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, that was me. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I muted myself. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm good at that. I've done I'm that quite often good. lately. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so Stephanie is asking, is watermelon tourmaline good for the heart chakra cleansing and rebalancing? Oh, absolutely. Um, watermelon tourmaline is fantastic for the heart. Um, okay, so it's it's a, it's a tourmaline. So again, it's, it's striated. It's got those lines recessed down the length of the stone. So it's going to bring in a lot of energy for clearing, balancing, and activating. The watermelon tourmaline, it connects to Metatron, and it brings in a really high spiritual vibration. It also balances the masculine and the feminine very nicely because the pink is the feminine and the green is the masculine. Um, it brings in a joy vibration. So it brings a higher vibration into the heart chakra while cleansing, clearing, transmuting, and opening. Yeah, it's fantastic. Highly recommended. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a question. Uh, do you need to place these stones directly on the chakras or mm -hmm. can you pl place them in your hand? Can you put them under your pillow? Some woman place them in their bras. Can I put one in my right. jock strap? Right. Yeah. You can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. I as snuck that one in there. <laughs> so as long as a crystal is about is, um, this is a general rule again, okay? But as long as a crystal is within about two feet of your body, it can be affecting you, okay? Now, if you put the crystal directly over the chakra, it might have a little bit more of an impact directly on that area or the closest to the area that you're 